Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the Vassil Lomachenko, or Vasily Lomachenko, depending on your pronunciation, versus Richard Comey fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say this. I know Comey has lost two recent spectacular chaos. Right? Two, Teofimo Lopez, who just lost to George Cambosis, and to Jaron Ennis, who of course, like Cambosis, is unbeaten. What I want people to think about right now, as I look at the lines being posted on cloudbet.com that have Comey as a plus 765. Folks, it's Friday, December 10th, 2021. I'm just telling you, there's some outfits, one of them is Cloudbet, that has Comey as a plus 765, and they have Lomachenko as a minus 1299, just an eyelash under a minus 1300. Let's see if we can shorten these odds to make a profitable hedge. But let's get back to Comey. You know, the Teofimo Lopez, who fought Cambosis, Cambosis won the fight, wasn't the same fighter who beat Lomachenko. Right? Understand, Teofimo Lopez, for all of the problems that he has, and yes, he was getting hit in that Cambosis fight with some clean overhand counter right hands. Right? I'll concede it. But understand, in terms of counter punching skill, being able to throw power counters, Teofimo has few peers. Even today, after a fight, I thought he lost to Cambosis. Right, Teofimo, I understand. Right now, the market's down on Teofimo. Okay, fair enough. In terms of just pure counterpunching ability, not defense, but counterpunching ability, Teofimo Lopez, in my opinion, is among the 10 best in boxing. Well, let's freak people out. Right? Understand, where you make profits is in the gap between what people think and what's really happening. You know, Jaron Ennis, in a sport with Canelo, in a sport with Crawford, in a sport with Usyk, in a sport with Fury, you know, I'm not completely convinced that Jaron Ennis isn't the best in terms of sheer ability his A game, right? You know, if I were Terrence Crawford, I wouldn't fight Jaron Ennis. He doesn't have a title, right? He does not have a title. But understand, Jaron Ennis, like Crawford, like Tyson Fury, like Lomachenko, is ambidextrous. Understand, unlike Lomachenko, Jaron Ennis has serious power. Right? Jaron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz, I believe, are going to shake things up quite a bit. So let's just say I privately feel that Jaron Ennis is the betting side of the play for me because I know he'd be the underdog. I know I'd get serious odds if he were to fight the fighter I consider to be the best in the sport pound for pound. Terrence Crawford. He beat Comey. Right, folks? Uh, you know, that doesn't shake me up that much. Losing to the best. You know, some heavyweight losing to Tyson Fury, I'm not going to view that heavyweight as a guy who can't fight. It could be that he ran into an elite fighter on the wrong night. That's what I believe happened to Comey. 
So understand the styles here because it's very different than Teofimo Lopez's style. Comey is a combination puncher. Right? That doesn't mean the guy's throwing punches three minutes of every round. No, what that means is, as with Andy Ruiz, the heavyweight, when the guy opens up, he opens up. Right? When you're throwing punches with both hands, folks, it's hard to have a hand up. Let's remember, Andy Ruiz gets dropped by Anthony Joshua before of course he finishes off Joshua right just understand with Richard Comey he's gonna be throwing both hands he's thinking about throwing both hands he's not gonna be thinking about defense people forget that Ray Leonard got dropped by Kevin Howard Right, Ray Leonard certainly got dropped by Donnie Lalonde. Ray Leonard was a combination puncher. Right, these guys dive all in. We're in the Floyd Mayweather post era, right, where people are pot shotters. They're a little bit more defensively minded, right? Mayweather is like Jordan, right? I watched NBA games, nobody thought about defense, right? Magic, Bird, nobody thought about defense. Jordan comes along and suddenly everyone starts thinking about defense because Jordan thought about defense. Floyd Mayweather has gotten fighters thinking about defense. You have a lot of pot shotters in the sport. Guys expect punches coming back. Apparently they don't in Ghana. Right? When Comey opens up, he opens up. This is not a pot shotter. When he gets going, he gets going. So what does that mean? It means that he's open for slick counterpunchers. Now if you have the power of a Teofimo Lopez, let's remember folks, in a fight Teofimo is losing. He drops George Cambosis. Right? If you have Teofimo's power, if you have Jaron Ennis's power, then you can make Comey pay for his defensive shortcoming. Right? Just like Anthony Joshua made Andy Ruiz pay that first fight. Right? Before Joshua figured out that he needed to get on his bike in the second fight. Well, folks, I'm not convinced that Lomachenko has that kind of punching power. Right? I know he ran over... Anthony Kralla, but most of the fights I see Lomachenko in go several rounds. So let's look at these odds. Let me also say this too, and I know this is not the status quo in boxing, right? You know, Richard Comey shouldn't be a plus 765 against anyone. Right? I don't I don't believe that if he fights anybody 8.65 times, he's only gonna win once. Understand the deal with counterpunchers. If Richard Comey doesn't get caught early, like he did in the Teofimo Lopez fight, like he did in the Jaron Ennis fight, if the guy fighting him doesn't have that big one punch knockout power, right? If the guy fighting him isn't that great counterpuncher who sees the opening, it registers. The guy knows the pattern. Next time he sees the opening, he closes the show. Right? If the guy isn't like that, if the guy is more of an accumulation puncher, which I believe Lomachenko is, where he sees the opening, he hits you. You say, oh, wow, okay, this guy got me that time, but you're still conscious. Right? The power is decent, but it's not concussive. Right? Obviously, in the ninth and 10th round against Lomachenko, when you're tired and you're confused and a bit battered, then you get hit. You know what? The punches add up. But not in the first three rounds. Right? That Nakatani fight's interesting because Nakatani gets hurt badly off a punch that seemed to be off a break. 
I don't expect that to happen here. So we're going to gamble. Folks, this is my core constituency. We're going to gamble here. I'm not going to pay a minus $12.99 on Lomachenko. you got to be kidding. Also, folks, I'm simple. When I hear that a fighter like Richard Comey, who I know is a handful, I get the fact that there's some tapes out there where he's getting overwhelmed. Scariest footage I've seen this year is that Jaron Ennis tape. Right? That's the scariest. I get that Comey had some bad nights. Right, folks? He's had other nights where he's looked good. He only has three losses. Right? He's 34. These are experienced fighters. He's not going to be overwhelmed by the magnitude of fighting Lomachenko. So I'm simple. You tell me a world-class fighter who's not fighting some guy with a punch like Jaron Ennis. Right? That Lipinets fight is scary, by the way, with uh, Ennis. Right? Serious body shots in that fight. Well, you tell me that I'm getting a Comey and he's not fighting a guy with a heavy punch. And understand, I still view Lomachenko as one of the best fighters in the sport pound for pound. I'm a Lomachenko fan. Right? But he's not a big puncher. You put Comey, a combination puncher, who hits harder than Lomachenko, in a fight and you tell me I'm getting a plus 75, folks, you're going to be seeing me get out of my seat and stand in line to place a bet on, Lomache on um, Comey. Right? Understand. The longer this fight goes, the better Lomachenko's chances. Now I see an over-under here. Again, I'm using the numbers off cloudbet.com of eight and a half rounds. This fight is risky. I'm not here to say what I'm proposing here. Is it risky? But again, this, this is a gambling site. I like the over eight and a half rounds. I'm not paying $12.99. I'm paying a minus one eighteen. I like the over eight and a half rounds hedged with Comey simply to win at plus 765. Understand, you can structure the bet so you win if either happens. In other words, Lomachenko wins the fight after the halfway point of the ninth round. That's what an eight and a half means. Eight full rounds and half of the next. Right? Quite frankly, you get to the second half of the ninth round, you don't care who wins. Right? If Lomachenko wins past the halfway point of the ninth round, great. But understand, if Comey gets a stoppage, or better yet, if Comey wins after the halfway point of the ninth round, then you win on both sides of the bet. Right, folks? A plus 765 gives you leverage. I can bet twice as much on the over eight and a half rounds. Right? And if either wins, Comey, by any way possible, Right? By stoppage. I believe Comey's best pass to victory is by stoppage early. Right? Let's remember, Linares drops Lomachenko. Linares, like Comey, an older fighter. Right? I'm just telling you, volume-wise, Linares can't match Comey. Right? Because, again, Comey's a combination puncher. Guys like Linares are thinking about defense and spacing. Comey's thinking about getting rid of you, stopping you. Right? So just to understand, these are two older fighters. Comey suffered a couple of losses, I would say, 
look at his opposition. Right? Whatever we think about Teofimo Lopez, just understand that he's in demand for a reason. He's a, an extremely skilled counter. The layoff didn't help him. He looked rusty. His defense wasn't the same. But let's just say two minutes and 20 seconds into his fight against George Cambosis, he was dominating Cambosis. Right? That knockdown late in the first round really did change a lot in that fight. Just to understand Jaron Ennis, he's one of the few men in boxing who look like he can legitimately be the best in the sport pound for pound. Not everyone has that capability. There are many champions you look at and you admire and you say, hey, this guy's interesting, right? But you understand, Arthur Berturbiev doesn't really have a lot of defense. Right? You, you understand. There are certain holes in people's games. Right? You get that. You understand, hey, this guy, as great as his record is, right, has some issues that would prevent him from being the best in the sport pound for pound. Kovalev, for example, great jab. You understand he has a weak core. To be the best in the sport pound for pound, you really have to convince people that you have very few holes. Right? So, of course, in the conversation right now, Terrence Crawford who I think is the best pound for pound. Ambidextrous, unbeaten, high KO percentage. Right? Wants to fight the big guys. Has been hunting down Errol Spence. We understand Spence, car crash. Spence, detached retina or torn retina, depending on the news you believe. Right? He fights Sean Porter, who has never been stopped. He stopped Sean Porter. Right? You understand Canelo. Shows up at 168 mows down four guys to become undisputed. Three of the four unbeaten at the time of the fight. Right? We get that. I'm just telling you with all that talent, the next generation is already in the building. Right? Jaron Ennis might not be a box office name right now. Certainly he has the talent to be. Right? When I hear a guy lost to Jaron Ennis, I say, okay, well, you know, the guy certainly has fought one of the very best in the sport. Uh, the fact that the guy lost, uh, he's not on my wash up, uh, my washed up list. So I feel this is a dangerous fight for Lomachenko. The bet I like is Comey simply to win at a plus 765. I understand other shops have him you know, plus 600 and stuff. Let's just say, if you're getting above a plus 550, you need to take that bet. Folks, boxing's an international sport. It's highly competitive. Right? The idea that you could look at a guy and think that the other guy would beat him seven times out of eight or six times out of seven when the guy has knockout power and has fought elite talent and when both of these guys quite frankly recently lost fights let's remember too Lomachenko has surgery after the Teofimo Lopez fight the fact that these odds are this unbalanced tells me that I have to have Comey simply to win as part of my betting portfolio because I think Lomachenko starts to assert himself later in the fight I like the over eight and a half rounds but let's be clear here I want everyone to understand the risk involved if Vassal Lomachenko comes in and closes the show before the midway point of the ninth round. You lose it all. 
That's the risk I'm willing to take. Let me hear in the comment section how you see the fight, how your view differs from mine, how you would play these odds. Right? Again, the odds I'm seeing are Comey, this is straight off cloudbet.com, Comey plus 765, simply to win. Right? Vasyl Lomachenko is a minus 1,299. Right? Practically 13 to 1. Simply to win. The over-under I'm seeing here on CloudBet is eight and a half rounds. Tell us how you're playing it in the comment section of this YouTube video. I like the underdog at these odds, plus 765, hedged with the over eight and a half rounds. Thanks for stopping by.